Hello everybody and welcome to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over how you can use some free LUT packs from Cinepax as well how you can kind of mess around getting started in color grading using LUTs and just kind of manipulating your footage inside DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's get started. Now to get the LUTs that we are using today, go over to Cinepax.com, free tutorials, and add the LUTs free sample pack to your cart. Then just put in your email, everything else doesn't really matter, and you'll get your free download so we can start working. Now if you don't know, LUTs stand for lookup tables, which essentially are algorithms that you throw your footage through that will overall change the color, tone, and visuals of your footage. Now when you use LUTs alongside basic color grading techniques, you can come out with really amazing and awesome color grades for your videos. So let's show you how you can get started with them in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so to install your LUTs, they're a little bit different than other things in DaVinci Resolve. All you gotta do is go up to File, Project Settings, click on Color Management right here, and go down to Lookup Tables and Open LUT Folder. Click on that right there, and that will essentially open up your folders where all your LUTs for DaVinci Resolve are stored. Now once you have this folder open, obviously what you're going to want to do is drag all of the LUTs into this folder. Now today we're going to be using the sample pack from Cinepacks.com. All you got to do is once you have it downloaded, just double click on it to unzip it and and inside this folder are the two free sample LUTs. So just go ahead and drag those on over. I have a folder here called Cinepax so I can keep all my LUTs organized and I'm just going to drag them in and you're all good. Then just go back over to DaVinci Resolve and click update lists that way it will update the file system. Alright so if you go over to your color page with some footage you'll find your LUTs over here on this tab right here which is called LUTs. It's pretty obvious. But basically right here you'll find all your folders of all the different LUTs that you have. But basically this is where you'll find all the different folders and I had my own folder called Cinepax which is where I will find my LUTs sample right here. You'll see that I have the autumn LUT for log footage and the autumn for rec footage. To apply this LUT all you have to do is right click on it and apply LUT to current node. So now it is applied to this node and you can see that it kind of gives it a nice kind of full really nice little autumn. LUT effect so I can toggle this on and off and you can see the subtle little changes that it gives. Alright now I know we just went through the free sample pack which only comes with one LUT but I also wanted to take a moment to kind of mention and look at basically the full size pack that you can get from Cinepax.com. As you can see there's a lot more LUTs here rather than just the one and these have all been very high quality LUTs so it comes with both rec and log. You can throw on a cool achromatic tone to everything or give everything kind of a dreamy, dreary kind of tint. There's also a vintage one as well. There's a variety of different ones. Here, if I click on this person here, you can see here's the vintage LUT applied to it. And you get a nice warm tone to everything. And I really like the pink plants here. It's a very retro stylized LUT. I really, I really do like the blue and kind of almost split tones that it gives, which is really nice. And a lot of other cinematic fills. And then of course you have a version for the logs as well which will of course bring out your color a lot more. If you guys do want to go get all these LUTs on Cinepax.com, use the code SAMPLE15 during checkout and that'll give you 15% off your order. Now if you want to do any corrections to this node, what you want to do is probably right click and add a corrector node before this. That way you are editing the raw pixel data from the source. After it goes through the LUT node here, you're going to lose some data and you're going to get different outputs if you try to correct it after this node. So definitely edit before this node. Now DaVinci Resolve is on its own a massive color grading program and it's very intricate and complex. I am by no means a professional in this but you really do have to know at least your basics of how you can manipulate your footage if you want to be able to push your videos to the next level. Now under your primaries tab right here there's a few different options here if you click through. Uh, you either have your wheels, bars, or log. I'm sure you're very used to your logs here because that will basically show you your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. And just so you know, this scroller right here will affect the luminosity of each channel and the hue circle right here will actually affect obviously the hue. So if we wanted the highlights to be extremely blue, as you can see, the highlights are blue and our sky is very bright. Same with the shadows and same with the midtones. Um, offset will basically control everything, uh, the entire clip, and just shift and just shift all the pixel data in the entire image to a different hue or lightness. 
Now you may be wondering though, what is the difference between your log and the wheels here? Now that's very important because basically you wanna use your wheels before moving on to your log because this will do a better overall correction without losing any data. This is of course demonstrated a lot better on a black and white image here. So if we look at our waveforms here, you'll see here's the steps of each one of our different luminosity values in this image. If I go back over to my log here, and I start shifting around the values, my shadow values, if I bring those up, you will see that all it's taking is just the shadows, just the lower area. And as you can see, it clips off right here. All it is taking is the dark areas and raising the lightness. Likewise, if I take it all the way down, the shadow area is going to take out just the black areas. But notice how it cuts off right here. It is only affecting the darkest, shadowiest values of the image. And look how that is represented in the scope. It cuts off right here. Now let me show you how this differs from your wheels page. If we look at our lift, which is the equivalent on a wheels page, now if I raise the luminosity on the lift, this will rather shift the entire curve into lightness. It's a much more gradual effect going from the shadows and affecting the entire image on. So you're not having ex any extreme cutoffs and you're affecting the image as a whole to get a better color grade. Likewise, I'll pull this all the way down into the darkness and you can see how it slowly starts to just affect the rest of the image and especially looking at our scopes here, notice how it takes all the pixel values with it while affecting the shadows mostly. You can see how much it affects right here. And if I go to the gain, which is essentially like the highlights, that will take the lighter values and affect those the most. So that's just a quick rundown of basically the differences between the color wheels and the log wheels. Um, and I think it's very important to kind of know the difference because you can see basically how much they just affect certain portion. Log is much better for your secondary color grades where you are trying to do some very specific and isolating color corrections without affecting the entire image. All right, so why don't we go ahead and trial this out on some log footage here. So if I drag over here and right click and apply this to our color node, as you can see, that brings out a lot of detail there that we couldn't see before. Uh, let me turn this on and off and you can see what we started with and where we came from and we can go in and do some manual corrections as well so just drag in a new node put it before the log put it before the LUT that way you're not losing any data and if we wanted to we could kind of go over to our wheels and maybe bring down bring up the lift just a little bit so we have a little bit more contrast there and ever so slightly I might lift up the offset just to brighten the entire image as a whole um, and the sky and the sky is a little bloated out for me so I might go over to our highlights because that will isolate the sky just a little bit better and bring it down just a little bit so I can just see a little just ever so slightly so I can see a little bit more of the clouds Another really important thing that I would like to know is simply all the different places that your color correcting nodes can be applied. Now, whenever you're working in the color page here, normally you're gonna be on clip right here. And as you can see, it'll be on clip, it's only going to be affecting the one clip in your timeline. However, if you switch to timeline here, this will essentially show you the node graph for your entire timeline. So any editing that you do here will affect all the clips in your timeline. So if I right click here and add a corrector node and connect that, now we have corrections that are affecting the entire timeline. So for example, if I bring everything pink and go back to our edit page, you'll notice that it's not only applied to our desert scene here, but it's affecting every other clip in the timeline. And if we drag any new footage onto our timeline, it will affect that. Now that's not necessarily what we want, but that is something to keep in mind if you ever want to edit all clips in your timeline and they're all recorded with very similar exposure or they've all been color corrected. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our timeline here and delete that out, that way we're not affecting everything. But another thing that I'd like to note is you can also use adjustment layers to do all of your corrections. So go over to your effects library, effects, and drag in an adjustment clip. And dragging in an adjustment clip, essentially if you go over to your color panel, 
and let's just drag, drag everything pink again, um, you'll notice that it will affect anything below it. So if I drag this around, you can basically now just take this and overlay it over whatever footage that you want corrected, and it will affect everything that is under that adjustment layer. So that about just wraps up our super quick introduction to color correction and using LUTs specifically inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I hope you found this very useful and you had a lot of fun messing around with the LUTs pack. If you guys do want to get the full version of the LUTs from Cinepacks.com, I have a code for you, SAMPLE15, SAMPLE15, type that in during checkout at Cinepacks.com to get 15% off your order and that'll give you access to a huge amount of LUTs and a lot more color correction opportunities inside DaVinci Resolve. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun messing around and I wish you the best of luck video editing. So have a great day.